Okay, this is section 5.4. We're talking about half angle formulas in this section of trigonometry. Um, just like the other two, actually, we need to find the formulas on our salmon sheet. So right in the middle of the page, on the very top, you'll have your half angle formulas, and you should see all of these in there somehow, some way. Okay, so there's exactly only one for sine, one for cosine, and there are two for tangent of the half angle. It kind of depends upon the scenario that you're in and which one you like. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. So when I give you a problem, what you need to do is figure out what is it asking? Okay, what does my final answer want me to find? And then basically I write that formula on my paper. So if I'm asked to find sine of the half angle, I'm gonna honestly want to write that in on my paper. So sine of A over two equals plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine A over Okay, so what's kind of nice about this one before we even worry about uh, the plus or minus part is I'm already giving you what cosine of a is Okay, so I already know that I can plug this in and get plus or minus the square root of 1 minus what is cosine a in this problem? It's 3 fifths Over 2 Okay, and now here's kind of the quote-unquote hard part um equals plus or minus the square root of two-fifths over two over one. And when you guys have a fraction on the bottom, you can flip it and multiply by its reciprocal. And we'll end up with what? Plus or minus, what do we have here? Two over 10? Oh, I messed up. It's, yes, two over 10, okay? So if we have square root of 2 over 10, what does that reduce to? Plus or minus the square root of, well, 1 fifth, which can end up being the square root of 1 over the square root of 5. And then you do your root 5 over root 5 thing. And we end up with plus or minus square roots of 5 over 5. So I'm betting everybody could plug and chug your way through this formula and get to this answer. Here's the hard part of these half angle f uh, problems, okay? It gives you that the full angle interval, and you will always get a full angle interval, is between 270 and 360, okay? So that's the full angle. The problem is, what are you actually finding? The half angle. So what you need to do to figure out which uh, sign to pick is, you need to actually divide your interval everything by two and if you divide your interval by two the answers interval okay is between 135 degrees and then 180 degrees so essentially quadrant two and since we're finding sine is sine positive or negative in quadrant two Sine's positive. So in this case, since we're finding the half angle of sine, you're going to end up with root 5 over 5 in the positive direction because sine in that quadrant is positive. Okay? Using the same idea, exact same initial setup of the problem, except I want to find cosine of the half angle. Okay? So you're going to go through the same battle. So if we go to our formula sheet and we find out that cosine of a over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of, in this case it's 1, plus cosine of a over 2. That's why I was mixed up on the last time I looked at this answer instead of the last one. Uh, I'm going to end up saying plus or minus the square root of 1 plus, see in this case I already have cosine again, so it's 3 fifths, over 2. Okay, and then I end up dumping all this together. Uh, I'm going to, that'd be what, 8 fifths, so equals plus or minus the square root of, we have 8 over 5 over 2 over 1. So in this case, you have to multiply by 1 half again. You're going to do that every time you do the half angle formulas for sine and cosine. And end up with, what do we have, 8 over 10, which that'll reduce to plus or minus 4 fifths. So then if you take the square root of 4 on top, that's two. Square root of five's on the bottom. You do your rationalizing in, you get plus or minus two root five over five. Okay? 
Now, before you get your answer, it's not both. It's not one or the other. It's only one of them. You got to go back to what is the interval of what you're finding. So we know that we're finding the half angle of cosine. Well, the full angle, the one that we pulled our three-fifths from, okay, has this interval. So we, once again, need to divide it by two, okay? So once again, the answer's interval will be in the same quadrant two because it ends up being 135 degrees to 180 degrees. So if you think about quadrant two for cosine, cosine's negative there. So we end up taking negative two root five over five, okay? You use your original interval doing all the other stuff and taking all of that in until you get to your answer. Then we have to go find our half angle interval or essentially when you cut your angles in half or the interval it's in in half that becomes the issue we deal with so cosine became negative there okay so now i want to do the exact same problem okay this is the same problem same setup but i want to find tangent so you have two options um, it doesn't honestly matter which one you pick um, so i'm just going to pick tangent of the half angle of a is equal to sine of the full angle over one, one, plus cosine of the full angle A, okay? So now how do I go through and do this? Well, I know that cosine A is three fifths, okay? So if I end up coming down and answering this, I know it's one plus three fifths. How do I find sine of my full angle? Well, you guys know how to do this. This isn't anything necessarily new. If I want to find sine of the full angle, okay, I need to plot my full angle is in quadrant four, okay, and I know that cosine of my full angle is three fifths. Well, what does that make my other side? Well, if you do Pythagorean theorem or recognize a three, four, five triangle, this would be a four, but since it's down, it's negative, okay? So I'm looking for sine of my full angle in order to finish my formula. So I just use this interval that's given, okay? So I know that the top of this is four, negative four over five because sine is your opposite over your hypotenuse, all right? So now I just need to simplify these two things. So I'm gonna have negative four fifths over eight fifths. And then since I have a fraction on the bottom, I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by five eighths. Five eighths, five eighths, and I end up seeing that I get, ch -ch -ch, that's gone, that's gone, negative four over eight, which is negative one half, okay? And that's it, you're done. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, all right? So even if you would cut this guy in half, all right, you'll end up in the second quadrant and tangent's also negative there as well. It's not a plus or minus, you're gonna do what it says anyway, but I just wanted to show that it will stay negative Tangent doesn't need the plus or minus because the uh, signs will take care of themselves, okay? So negative one half is the answer on that one. All right, so question four is a little long. So I say I want to find all six trig functions here, okay? So we got to try and make this as swift as absolutely possible. In order to do this, you're probably going to want to draw yourself a picture because at somehow, some way, you're going to um, deal with sines, cosines, tangents, whatever. So sine A is negative 12 over 13 in quadrant, that's quadrant three, okay? So I'm gonna say that this is my angle A, my full angle gives me a sine of negative 12 over 13. What does that make this missing side? Hopefully you recognize a five, 12, 13. If not, you can use Pythagorean theorem, okay? But I'm now am not looking for my full angle A's. I wanna find the half angles of all six trig functions. Well, we know the relationship of the six, so if you guys can find the three normal, per se, sine, cosine, tangent, just like we did on the previous problems, the rest of them will take care of themselves, okay? So let's dump this in and we go sine A over two equals plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine A over two. All right, so cosine of A. That's going to your original angle. Cosine is negative five over 13. Okay, so I'm gonna dump that in. I'm gonna try to write a semi-small here. So plus or minus the square root of one minus a negative five over 13 over two. 
All right, so that ends up giving you plus or minus the square root of, what would that be, 13 over 13 plus 5 over 13, so 18 over 13 over 2 over 1, so times 1 half, times the 1 half, you end up getting plus or minus the square root of 18 over 26, and that will reduce to 9 over 13, okay? And then square root of 9 is 3, and then that will be the square root of 13. So that will end up being 3 square roots of 13 over 13 when you rationalize it all out. The problem is we have to try and figure out, is it plus or minus in here? Which one is it? Okay. So what you need to do now is think about if I cut my interval in half again. Okay. So my half angle answers interval in this problem the whole time will once again be what 90 to 135 degrees which will be quadrant 2 okay so is sine positive or negative in quadrant 2 it's positive so I use the positive angle okay so that will be your sine Okay, to do cosine now, I'm just going to try and give, leave myself a little room. You go find cosine, half angle A equals, what's the formula on your sheet of paper? Plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine A over 2. All right, so if I go equals plus or minus the square root of 1, and then in the, instead of adding, okay, 5 over 13, you're going to subtract 5 out of 13 over 2. So that will end up being... 13 minus 5 is 8 over 13 over 2 over 1. You're going to multiply by your 1 half again. And you end up with plus or minus the square root of, what do we have, 8 over 26. So that will reduce one time to 4 over 13. And then if you take the square root top and bottom, you end up getting plus or minus the square root. 13 on the bottom, and you'll get just a 2 on top. And then you rationalize, you end up with, uh, what do we got? 2 root 13 over 13. Now, do I use the plus or the minus? Cosine in quadrant 2, because that's where my half angle is, is negative. So I know it's going to be negative 2 root 13 over 13. Okay? And then if I do your tangent of the half angle, okay? So let's do the other one just for fun. Tangent of the half angle equals 1 minus cosine A over sine A, since I did the other one on the last problem. All right, so if I do it that way, that'll be equal to 1 minus cosine of the A is negative 5 over 13 over sine of the A, we already know, is negative 12 over 13. So these are actually pretty quick and simple. Um, this will turn to plus, so 13 plus it's 18 over 13 on top over a negative 12 over 13 on the bottom. And if you guys multiply by the reciprocal, so 13 over 12 times a negative 13 over 12. So the negative, these are all gone. 13's crossed. You will end up with negative 18 over 12, which you could reduce that, divide it all by 6. So negative 3 halves is your tangent. Now when I ask you guys to do all six, I'm just going to say it, I'm not necessarily going to write it, how do you find the other ones? Well if you guys take your sine, that's related to cosecant by taking the reciprocal of your answer, and the easier one would be actually right here. So maybe I will write it in red or, no red's bad, black, okay? And I'm going to do it kind of sideways. Cosecant of your half angle will equal if I come to this one right here and you flip it, it'll be positive. It'll be root 13 over 3. So there's your cosecant, okay? Your secant half angle, all right? That's just taking, now you would go back to right here, would be negative root 13 over 2, okay? And then your cotangent 
half angle is just taking your tangent and flipping it and it'd be negative two thirds. Okay, so once you find the three original ones, finding the other three, you just take your reciprocal ideas. Okay, so I just wanted to make that a little bit faster than it had to be. Okay, tangent 15 degrees. It says use the half angle identity. Well, if it's tangent, you have to use a tangent uh, formula. So I'm just going to go and grab one, and I'm just going to write it down, and that is 1 minus cosine of A over sine of A. Here's the kicker, all right? This is tangent of the half angle formula. Well, this is supposed to equal 15 degrees, okay? Because that's the, the problem I'm doing. Well, what divided by 2 gets me 15 degrees? That's what you have to ask yourself. Well, we know then that A is 30 degrees. So using that idea, we now know that A is 30 degrees. That's what we use to find these uh, things that we need to plug in into our formula. So 30 degree angle, all right? 30 degree angle, we all know is one, two square roots of three. Well, one minus cosine of a 30 degree angle is root three over two over sine of one is one half okay so now I could just simply multiply everything by two to get rid of my denominators and that would make it two minus root three all over one well, that's kinda neat because it's all gone so your answer ends up just being two minus the square root of three Okay, so if I ever ask you to do that type of angle, you just need to know what A is, and there's a variety of different ones that are in your homework. That's all you need to do. Last one I'm going to do today is show a proof of some of these half angle identities. Okay, what you got to do is, you remember, you can't touch the right side. So I'm using the sine half angle identity, and then I'm going to square it. So I need to go find my sine of my half angle, which is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine I'm going to put an X because I'm using X's over 2. And then since it's squared, you square it. Well, what do you guys know about squaring a square root? Everything goes away, and squaring a positive or negative, it becomes positive. So it's 1 minus cosine X over 2. That's the first part. Now I look at the denominator. That's usually what I look at first. And I see that there's a 2 there, but what am I missing? A tangent. There's my big hint. I need to somehow have a tangent show up. So I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by tangent x, okay? So you end up then showing, and I'm just going to distribute at the same time, tangent x minus cosine x tangent x all over 2 tangent x. So the bottom is golden. We're good. We don't need to mess with it, okay? The top has a tangent in the first spot, but I need just sine in the second spot. Well, if you look at this, I can rewrite tangent... Remember, tangent is sine over cosine, if I do that one instead. And then your cosines cross. And you're just simply left with the tangent x minus sine x over, oh, that's small, 2 tangent x, which is what I want, so I have my smiley face and I have proof in it. Okay? So in class... This is going to be our assignment. We will work through some of these together. It's just a matter of knowing which formulas to use and just plugging and chugging along. So I hope that you all have a wonderful day.